Alan Dwight Watson, 68, of Plainview, passed away on Sunday, April 16th, 2023, in Amarillo, Texas. Dwight was my uncle. I am his sister Joanne's son. So he was my uncle. He was my uncle in title, but he was more than that. Being so close in age to me, he could have been my cousin, but he seemed more like a brother to me. He was part of the youngster trio, along with Carol and Ricky. And when I would go uh, to visit, um, they gave me no choice. I was going to be part of whatever grand adventure they had planned for that trip. Dwight uh, is known as the quiet one. Um, I don't remember him always being that way. He had a lot of fun when he was young. Um, Dwight, um, to me, was the, he was the cool one. Uh, I thought that he looked like Ringo Starr. Um, he was um, sometimes stubborn, but Dwight was always sincere. Gene, and Donna, you and all of the Watson siblings have always been more than aunt and uncle to me. Dwight was born November 12th, 1954 in Wheeler, Texas to Lucky and Mildred Watson. He was born 10 months after his sister and my mom, Joanne, married my dad, Carol. But, according to the stories I was told, Dwight's sister was actually stolen from the family by my dad. I still love to hear that story, but I'm thankful that everybody got past that. Dwight was a very loving husband and father. He loved each of his children in a way that only he and nobody else could. He was devoted to his wife, Becky, and deeply committed to his family. And we all knew that. His most important role in that regard was being deity to all of his grands and great-grands. Dwight started driving trucks at a very early age and drove for many companies. He went to work for Walmart in July of 1986. And Dwight was the fourth Walmart driver to receive the Four Million Safe Miles Award on June 12, 2017. And he will be deeply missed by so many family and friends. He is preceded in death by his parents, Lucky and Mildred Watson. <coughs> by his brothers, Doyce Watson, Marshall Watson, Leon Watson, Philip Watson, Ronnie Watson, and by his sister, Cheryl McKinley. Dwight is survived by his wife, Rebecca Becky Watson of Plainview, his sons, Jeremy Chase Watson and wife Tricia of Plainview, Christopher Ty Watson of Plainview, his daughter April Danielle Wazinski and husband Jeff of Gale, his sisters Joanne Lackey of Fort Worth, Donna Huggins and husband Clive of Rio Rancho, New Mexico, his brothers Jean Watson and wife Sheila of Pampa, Carol Watson and wife Karen of Plainview, Ricky Watson and wife Sharon of Plainview. Dwight is survived by his sisters-in-law, Laura Watson of Odessa, Colleen Watson of North Richland Hills, 
and Alicia Watson of Amarillo. Dwight is survived by his grandchildren, Mallory Washington and husband Anthony of Plainview, Courtney Hasty and husband Ethan of Plainview, Brooke Newlin and husband Alex of Oxford, Mississippi, Taylor, Tiana, Caden, Abriana, and Eliana Watson of Plainview, and Chamber and Avery Wazinski of Gale. Dwight is survived by his great grandchildren, Adeline and Aspen Washington of Plainview, and two more precious additions that will be here in the fall. And finally, Dwight is survived by all of us, his family and friends that knew him so well. He will be so deeply missed. Memorials can be made to Garland Street Church of Christ of Plainview and DonateLifeTexas.org. Dear Lord, we thank you for giving us this time with Dwight. We are so thankful for how he touched our hearts and that we have a legacy in our heart from him that we will carry for the rest of our lives. We pray, Lord, for your continued blessing and watch care over this special family, especially during this time. And we pray these things in the blessed name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. And everyone said, amen. amen.
I miss the bear? I was looking forward. There was supposed to be a bear in the in the show, and I missed the bear. So, on behalf of uh, this family uh, that's taking up the front two sections, and I know some of y'all in the back are like, "I'm family too," uh, and you are. Uh, but I want to say thank you for everything you've done for for Becky and uh, this family uh, over the last several days. Not not just the last several days, because uh, Dwight's been through a lot for several years uh, and you have been there uh, for this family time and time again and so I just want to say thank you uh, for all that you've done uh, and, and especially for being here today as we honor Dwight. Uh, I want to read Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Uh, Becky said short and sweet. That was her instructions to me and, and I looked at her and I was like, you know how big your family is. <laughs> And how long it's going to take to read all these names. Uh, but we're going to do our best to keep it short and sweet. There's a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to kill, a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love, a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I've seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. God does it so that people will fear him. I know that there's nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good and find satisfaction in all their toil. That sounds like Dwight to me. Uh, he was happy. Uh, and, and there's a lot of memories that you have shared that describe him as happy. Uh, perhaps mischievous. Um, perhaps a little bit ornery. Uh, a man that can make everybody smile and laugh. Didn't have to be the center of attention, but was always there. be happy, uh, to do good. You have described that he was a hard worker and that if you ever needed anything fixed, he could fix it. Um, you, you don't work like Dwight did and not be a hard worker uh, and to do good. Dwight did good. Uh, and I'll share some stories in just a little bit. I asked the family yesterday to just give me one word to describe Dwight. The first word that was given was the word slow. <laughs> uh, his CB handle was slow poke. Uh, and I only had, uh, I've only heard one fast story and that was when uh, they were, y'all were on vacation and Jeremy left a retainer at a restaurant. Uh, and Dwight may have exceeded a speed limit or two uh, going back to get the retainer so he could catch up to the rest of the group going on vacation. Another word was hero. Uh, you know, when your kid calls you hero, uh, that's pretty special. The next one cheated, uh, and it's that mischievous word, but it wasn't just mischievous, it was kind and mischievous. <laughs> Uh, you have to put the two together, uh, and, and I think that's appropriate. 
dedicated. Uh, beside that word, I wrote out four million miles, uh, four million safe miles. And I got to thinking, as I was watching the pictures especially, I got to thinking, it wasn't four million safe miles. That's what the award was. Uh, how many more miles did Dwight travel to go to all your stuff, uh, to come see you, uh, to go to uh, ball games, to go to events that were special? To, I mean, you start going to family events and your family, <laughs> you're going to rack up a lot of miles. Four million miles is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, he was dedicated, not just to work, not just to being safe, but he was dedicated to his family, he was dedicated to his friends, uh, and he showed it not by just saying, I'm here for you, but by actually being there. Uh, so he traveled many more miles than the four million miles that he was awarded for. You may not know this, but Saturdays are for McDonald's. <laughs> Even if Dave says no. You know, it took me a long time in the office to figure out who Dee Dee and Dave were. <laughs> and Dave was one of the ones in the office, and I never could figure out which one was which for a long time. Uh, but he would take grandkids uh, to McDonald's for lunch every Saturday. Even when his wife said no, uh, he would still sneak them out of the house. There may have been a time or two that walking was involved, uh, but that was an important thing, and that, that's going to be a memory that is cherished for a long time. As you know, Dwight was a fighter. Um, you may not know that he was really a fighter, uh, at least once. Uh, when Jeremy was, was heading off into the Army, uh, they were outside uh, the airport in Amarillo, and Dwight put out his cigarette, and a kind gentleman reached down and picked it up and put it back in Dwight's pocket, at which point Dwight punched him and took it back out of his pocket and threw it back on the ground. <laughs> uh, that was the end of the fight. Uh, we know him as a different type of fighter uh, for the past several years. Family-oriented, pillar of strength, caring, loving, good-hearted. These are, these are all words that were used to describe Dwight. Dwight was the kindest, considerate person. Uh, there was a time that um, Tiana wrote this uh, when, when they were passing through uh, Tractor's Plot and there was a red tent and there was a camel named Humps, the humpback camel. And uh, Tiana got to ride Humps, the humpback camel, with Dee Dee. And she made him ride on the back in case somebody fell off, it would be him. <laughs> That's good thinking. Dwight could always make people laugh. He was quick on his toes with comebacks uh, when we would all pick on him. He always had a smile on his face and always seemed so happy. I may not be blood related, but he never treated me any different. The, the big life lesson I learned from you is always hard work without complaining. By the way, I'm only giving you small snippets. There's a lot more if you want to read, I can share with you later. Uh, he had a 69 Pontiac GTO that once upon a time they were working on, uh, he and Rick, and they had to leave. It didn't even have the rear end on it, so they pushed it up and parked Rick's truck behind it, and they left and they came back and the GTO had been stolen. <laughs> so if you see it, bring it back. <laughs> His comment was, uh, when they got back and it had been stolen, he said, well, I guess we don't have to worry about fixing it. <laughs> Uh, there was a time with Alicia that he picked her up and he didn't get gas and they ran out of gas and had to walk across Amarillo at 2 o'clock in the morning and when they went back the next day to get the car, uh, the glass had been broken, uh, it, the tires may have been taken, I'm not sure, uh, and his, his response then was, I should have gotten gas. <laughs> 
Jer Jeremy remembers uh, Dwight picking, uh, picking him up from uh, his grandparents in Amarillo and while it, it had snowed the night before and Dwight happened to pull into the TGNY parking lot and started doing donuts for about 30 minutes in the snow. Wasn't the only time, but that was, that was one of them. Uh, Courtney talks about when uh, she loved fishing uh, with Dee Dee. Uh, but one time when they were getting a fishing license and he had to describe himself to the clerk, he said he had brown hair with a little bit of gray. <laughs> and Courtney kind of laughed and said, don't you mean gray with a little bit of brown? <laughs> Grandkids can be rough sometimes. Jeff wrote a lot. And it's all one story. Uh, and I, I resonate with this story. Uh, it's the story about when he uh, went to ask Dwight if he could have April's hand in marriage. And Dwight could be very quiet. And so when Jeff uh, made arrangements to take him out uh, for supper, he went and picked him up and they went to Chili's and there was not a word spoken on the way to Chili's. And they went into Chili's and it was still a little bit before any words were spoken and Jeff finally blurted out what he was, what they were there for and there was very little conversation and then they rode back home in silence and <laughs> it worked. <laughs> uh, there was a time, uh, a holiday, uh, when the kids were in a, a room eating and there may have been a food fight that occurred and Dwight was the adult that wa walked into the room uh, and everybody was kind of afraid about what was going to happen because the, the adult showed up and Dwight looked and there were some mashed potatoes uh, on the wall uh, and he took his finger and got some of the mashed potatoes and took a bite and said, oh, they're still fresh and walked out. <laughs> He was never the loudest in the crowd. He never sought much attention, but he was always there. He was always sincerely interested when he asked how you were doing. Apparently, Dwight had a hard time finding the exit at museums and would stay forever in museums. Early on after I got here, Becky told me about Dwight. Not not a recent story. She told me a story from not long after they got married. Uh, and, and it had, I'm, we were talking about steaks, I know, because we talk about steaks a lot. Uh, and Becky and I pretty much agree on how steaks are supposed to be. Uh, medium rare-ish. And she told about Dwight and how uh, not long after they'd been married, uh, she cooked steaks one night he stopped off to have drinks with friends on the way home and uh, you know this is back before cell phones uh, and so she didn't know he was going to be late so she just left his steak uh, in the oven turned it off left it in the oven and she ate her steak the way it's supposed to be the way God intended for it to be eaten <laughs> well it was a gas stove so several hours later when Dwight got home, that steak had been cooking uh, for a long time. And Becky described it as shoe leather. And Dwight sat down and he started eating the steak and he started complimenting her on her steak making ability. And, and Becky finally got mad enough that she went to the other room because how dare you make fun of me uh, and my cooking. And if you've eaten Becky's cooking, you don't make fun of Becky's cooking. You don't need to because she knows what she's doing. And finally he came into the bedroom and said, what's wrong? And she said, you're making fun of me. And he said, no I'm not. He said, you keep talking about how delicious the steak is and it's ruined. And he said, no, that's the way I like it. <laughs> and they remained married after that. <laughs> amazing. One of the things that I heard from the family uh, yesterday uh, talking about memories and talking about everything and, and if you've lost someone very close to you, you know the reality of this. Your brain stops working and you can't think of memories and you can't think of all those things that you thought that you would remember forever. Uh, the good news is those memories come back. 
uh, but in the moment, it's hard, uh, and it's hard to remember. Um, and so these are just a few of the memories uh, that y'all are going to share, uh, and you're going to share a lot more memories. Um, I, preacher's job is, is to ask questions and to listen. I ask what verse, uh, would you, is there any verse that you would like to use? And, and this, the verse that was given to me was 1 John 4, 16. I want to read a little bit more than that. Um, I know that surprises you. Verse 16 says, We know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. I want to start back a little bit earlier than that. And I want to, I'm going to read past that. And I want you to hear this. Um, I think Dwight lived this out. And I want you to hear this as uh, what he might say to you today about how to live. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. We, he has given us of his spirit and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In, in this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command, anyone who loves God must also love their brothers and sisters. Love one another. Dwight loved you well. Dwight loved you well. Uh, he showed that uh, to the very end, that he loved you well. And he set an example that you can follow of how to love. Uh, so as you leave this place, as you share memories with each other, uh, as you continue to, to mourn and grieve, remember his love for you. Uh, and he loved you in special ways. He didn't take everybody to McDonald's. <laughs> um, but he loved you well. And so he set you an example that you might love one another as well. We're going to have uh, one more song uh, played. And then I will close this out with a word of prayer.
Just a couple of directions before the prayer. Uh, after the prayer, they're going to escort the family out, uh, and then they're going to open the casket, uh, so you can remain where you are, uh, and you'll pass by the casket after uh, the family has exited. Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you for today. It's a hard day, but we thank you uh, for the love and for the support in this room. I thank you for those that have gathered uh, to comfort this family, uh, to lend their support and their strength on this day, for all the many things that they've done uh, in days past and in days to come for this family. Father, we thank you for Dwight. I thank you for his love for his example of love. I thank you for uh, his hard work. I thank you for the ways that you have worked in his life the past several years to give him the length of life and the quality of life that he was able to enjoy, even amidst the struggles. And I thank you that through all of that, he continued to smile. He continued to laugh. He continued to enjoy the life that you had given him. Father, help us as we go from this place to remember his example of how to love and how to love well. Whether that be in miles traveled or time spent or special places that we go, help us to remember how to love well. Father, for this family, I pray your strength and comfort uh, today and in the days to come. I pray that those memories will come back and as they share them, they will remember more and more. Uh, and as the tears flow, they would, they would laugh and they would share and they would enjoy uh, Dwight and his life and all the memories that they made with him and that he made with them. Father, I pray that you would give them comfort and peace today. We're thankful for the peace that Dwight felt, and I pray that you would grant this family peace as well. So, Father, I thank you again for Dwight. I thank you for his example. Uh, for all those uh, who leave today, I pray your blessing upon them. Uh, as they go. Uh, for those who, like Dwight, travel many miles, I pray your blessings upon them and your safety upon them as well. Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the love that he showed to us that we might know how to love. I pray that you would strengthen us and remind us of your great love for us. It's through Jesus that we pray. Amen.